Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Greyhound Racing New Zealand 2022-23 Annual Awards Night, where we get to celebrate, pull our shoulders back, puff our chest out, the best of the best. My name is Hamish Mackay. For those of you whose lounge I shared for about 20 odd years from the TV3 studio, nice to see you again. For those of you who had your remote stuck on TV1, nice to meet you. <laughs> it's wonderful to have so many people here tonight, including those that have travelled a long way. Thank you. In particular, welcome to our special guests, including Desley Simpson, Deputy Mayor of Auckland, and her husband, Peter Goodfellow. Welcome also to Simon Stout, CEO of Greyhounds Austra Australasia, uh, Lachlan Fitt, CFO and Deputy CEO of Entain Australia and New Zealand, Cameron Roger, Managing Director of New Zealand, Entain Australia and NZ, Sean Hannan, Chair of Greyhound Racing New Zealand, and Edward Rennell, CEO of Greyhound Racing New Zealand. Now, my research has the Greyhound community uh, being like a big family, and I can definitely see and feel the vibe in here tonight. It, it is lovely uh, to be here. Now, a couple of our family members aren't here tonight, but our thoughts are with them. Sadly, Lisa Grant, wife of trainer Malcolm, uh, was recently diagnosed with stage four terminal cancer. Uh, Peter Hederick and uh, Tania Dixon have set up a Give a Little Fund to help, and you can head to the Give a Little page if you'd like to make a donation to help Lisa and Malcolm during this difficult time. Righty-ho, here we go. The four finalists for the Sprinter of the Year. Aston Lamont won the Group 2 Dash for Cash, finished third in the Group 1 Railway Sprint and won 10 sprint races during the season. Levi Bale he won 22 sprint races during the season, including the Dennis Cole Memorial Waikato Sprint and the Oaks Knight Sprint and second in the Group 1 Railway. Opawa Barnes won the Harding Cup and the Monaco Invitation Sprint and 16 total sprint races during the season. Opawa Ryder won the Group 1 Galaxy Sprint and a total of 16 races, sprint races, uh, during the season. The winner of the 2023 Sprinter of the Year is Levi Bale. <laughs> Trained by Craig Roberts and owned by Jan Wheeler, Sprinter of the Year Levi Bale had an outstanding 2022-23 season. He won 22 from 33 sprint races, including the 2023 Dennis Cole Memorial Waikato Sprint. Levi Bale underneath them, Corliger in front, Levi Bale a length, Corliger tries late, Levi Bale. Levi Bale a superb winner of the Waikato Sprint. Corborn Carty's back, Mackey's girl, and the other one back is Allegro Smudge, but it's Big Levi, drawn to perfection, and he's too good. He also finished second in the Group 1 Railway Sprint. Um, <laughs> I wasn't really prepared for this, but um, uh, look, um, you know, Levi Bale's been a great dog to have around. Um, he's called the handsome one throughout the Greyhound code. I think Liz thinks he's pretty good looking. And um, Jenny Bartlett's in love with him. Hopefully he'll end up on her couch when he retires because there's no room left on mine. There's already about four, four Greyhounds and three Retrievers, a Dash Hound um, and a cat. So uh, not, not much room at my place. But um, look, he's a very special dog. Um, he doesn't know how to run a bad race. He tries 100% uh, every time he goes out on the track. And, um, you know, as far as an athlete goes, he's, uh, he's, he's the perfect athlete. Um, but he wouldn't be where he is without the help of the team. Of, and here, the, 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 the boss. Got to call her that, otherwise it'd clout round the when we get back to the hotel. Um, but, and, and Daniel... Um, Leah at home, she's working away at home uh, now for us while we're away, and my brother Les has come on board in the last sort of six or eight months. So it's a team effort, and um, even Janine, who tried to retire from Greyhound Racing, but found it impossible, uh, comes and gives us a hand when need be. So uh, there's a lot of people that do a lot of work in uh, Greyhound Racing behind the scenes and probably don't get the rewards that they deserve, but, um, um, you know, that's what Greyhound Racing's all about, and... and uh, we love our greyhounds and they love to race. Thank you. 
We go on to the middle distance greyhound of the year, which is uh, always very highly competitive. Now, Australasia Greyhounds Australasia CEO Simon Stout will be presenting this award. So I'll ask Simon to come up and uh, complete the Mastermind Challenge. And then here we go. The finalists, a federal infrared, a girl with blinding early pace, which carried her to 17 victories, including the Group 1 Spy on Rose, the Group 2 North Island Challenge Stakes, Manawa 2 Cup, the Great Mates uh, Rehoming Program feature, uh, second in the New Zealand Cup. Opawa Hugo won the Group 1 New Zealand St Ledger, Group 2 Canterbury Futurity and the Trevor Wilkes Memorial Cup, winner of 14 races during the season, Opawa Hugo. Opawa Superstar, the aptly named Greyhound, had uh, 10 middle distance wins during the season, the Group 1 New Zealand Cup, Group 1 Waterloo, Group 1 South Island Champs, along with the Group 2 Colin Keane Memorial. Space Boy has won 14 middle distance races this season, Big upset to win the Group 1 Auckland Cup and also uh, second in the Group 1 New Zealand Futurity. The winner of the 2022-23 Middle Distance Greyhound of the Year, Opawa Superstar. Opawa Superstar won three Group 1 races during the season, including the New Zealand Cup, the Waterloo Cup and the Rose and Thistle South Island Champs. Opawa Superstar, he's a superstar by name, he's a superstar by nature, the Fahis get their 10th cup. Hey now, you're an all-star. It's all Opawa Superstar, four Group 1s, a Waterloo Cup, Gene and David Fahey, they've got one finally. He might be little in stature, but he's got the heart of a lion. Opawa superstar busts through the 300,000. What a dog. Trained by Gene and Dave Fahey and owned by Alan Davidson and Opawa Racing Limited, Opawa superstar is the 2022-23 Middle Distance Greyhound of the Year. Yeah, first of all, uh, Alan Davidson, who's got owns half share of it, is regretfully, and he's really disappointed. He's over in America at the present time. He'd have loved to have been here tonight. And uh, it's a dog that's really gone good for him. It's gone good for us. It's one that we've bred. And um, the Fays have done a great job in training it. And uh, it's, it's a great result for us. Thank you. Move on now to the stayer of the year. And I think quite like watching a staying race. Uh, some dogs lead all the way over the 700. Uh, some come from behind, like the old past champion, Swift Fantasy. And we saw some genuine staying stars on the track this season. Now, David Kingston, Greyhound Racing New Zealand board member, will present uh, this award. The finalists for stayer of the year... Uh, Gold Star Kalito won 10 staying races, including a thrilling come from behind in the Group 1 Duke of Edinburgh Silver Collar and a win in the Group 2 Kingston Cup. No keeper, last season's Greyhound of the Year had another excellent season. 11 staying wins, including the Group 2 Galway Cup and the New Zealand Nationals Distance Final, fourth in the Australasian Final. Thrilling Rogue won the Group 1 New Zealand Stayers Cup and the Group 2 Nancy Cobain Memorial among his five staying wins during the season. Drum roll. The winner, the 2023 Stayer of the Year, is Gold Star Kalito. Gold Star Kalito won 10 from 16 staying races during the season, including a spectacular come from behind victory in the Group 1 Duke of Edinburgh Silver Collar and a win in the Group 2 Kingston Cup. Gold Star Carlito on the outside, down the outside, Rajah Bale. Gold Star Carlito for Gold Star Racing. They get the collar of 2023. Up they come, Gold Star Carlito. The champ can't get him, and Carlito too good. Trained by Riley Evans and owned by Gold Star Racing, Gold Star Carlito is the 2022 23 Stayer of the Year. Hell. Um, I'll be honest, we sort of all didn't expect this. We sort of all come in here, sort to be honest, Keeper would win it. I mean, Keeper's the greatest, one of the greatest champions the sport's ever had. Um, 
But yeah, real honour to win this. Uh, us three, we all love our stayers. Um, yeah, I'll, yeah, just a surprise. Um, he's been a great dog for us. Uh, workhorse of our kennel block for the for the past you know uh, year and a half. I um, just want to say a big thanks to Chris and Lisa Earl. They bred him. Uh, a lot of people think we actually bred him, but no, they bred him. And there's three in the litter. Uh, one never made it to the track. Uh, one's uh, a C1 520 dog at the moment, and one's a uh, Group One and Group Two winner. So, but yeah, um, yeah. Just want to also say a big thanks to um, Josh and Xanthi um, and Mike, our workers. They um, they all do a good job, and they're all big reason why um, he's been so good to us. So yeah, thank you. Congratulations, Riley. Thank you, Stephen, Bonnie, and David. Just want to mention the uh, superb videos too. Uh, great work by uh, Zara Corley there, and of course the dulcet tones of the first caller of the new millennium. MTW, my old friend from TV3 Days, sitting down here in front of me. She's going to shoot me later on for that, but I had to get it in. Right. New Zealand bred greyhound of the year. It's always good when that meets what's on there. I like that. Last season, we've seen perhaps more than ever just how good our breeding stock is. Our homebred greyhounds are good enough to compete on the world stage, and we've clearly seen that with the achievements of Postman Pat and Big Daddy across the ditch this year. We've got a strong lineup of finalists for New Zealand bred greyhound of the year, and presenting this award will be uh, Greyhound Racing New Zealand board member Craig Roberts. The finalists are Gold Star Kalido, the son of Dinah Double One and Dave's Dot, successfully mixed middle distance and staying races during the season, with feature wins coming in the Group 1 Duke of Edinburgh Silver Collar and the Group 2 Kingston Cup. No Keeper, the son of No Class and No Jinx, won the Group 2 Galway Cup along with the New Zealand Nationals Distance Final and fourth in the Australasian Final. Opawa Superstar, the son of uh, Fernando Bale and Opawa Tab, won three Group 1 races during the season. New Zealand Cup, Waterloo Cup, South Island Champs, along with the Group 2 Colin Keane Memorial. Postman Pat, the son of Hooked on Scotch, I love these names, and Bertie T, launched his career in New Zealand with a win in the Group 2 Far South Challenge and a second in the Group 1 New Zealand St Ledger. Before he crossed the ditch, he continued to fly the New Zealand bread flag extremely high, including seven straight wins and a second in the $1 million Brisbane Cup. The winner of the New Zealand Bread Greyhound of the Year Award is Opawa Superstar. Opawa Superstar was bred by Opawa Racing Limited and is a son of Fernando Bale and Opawa Tab. During the season, he had 20 starts for 11 wins and six minor placings, with victories coming in the Group 1 New Zealand Cup, the Waterloo Cup and the Rose and Thistle South Island Champs. The Fahey's getting their 10th cup. If ever a greyhound deserved a New Zealand Cup, it was the little lad. Here's a prize trophy about to head. On to the mantelpiece. Opawa superstar. What more can you say about him? I think everyone uh, tries to breed a, a top greyhound or a greyhound uh, and that turns out real good. We've bred a lot of greyhounds over the years and this is the best we've ever bred. And, um, no, it's so I think anyone that's tried breeding, you know, you never know what's going to happen. But if you can end up one that's half as good as this bugger, you're going good. <laughs> Thank you. Now we come to the first award of the night where we, everyone actually knows the winner, trainer of the year, to announce this award and to say a few words while he's up. Please, uh, I'd like to welcome Greyhound Racing New Zealand CEO Edward Rennell to the stage. So just a, a, a couple of facts. You know, Lisa Cole is the winner of this award. You know, she had a stellar season. You know, and I just read out some of the statistics, and it's yeah, you know, it's mind-boggling when you think about it. You know, the Palmerston North trainer finished on top of the premiership for the 22-23 season, with her 190 dogs having 4,063 starts for 828 wins. You think about that's just mind-boggling. 664 seconds and 618 thirds amassing $2.8 million in prize money and maintaining an excellent UDR of 0.3453. So 
it gives me pleasure to announce the trainer of the year and congratulations to Lisa Cole and the whole Cole family. Um, I'd just like to say a quick thanks to everyone that helps us at the track and all the staff at home and my mum and dad who can't be here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Ella. And staying with the trainer theme, it's now time for the Straight Right Trainer of the Year Award to be presented by Greyhound Racing New Zealand Chair Sean Hannon. Sean Hannon. The winner of the award is known as the Strike Rate Queen for a reason. Last season, the 12 Greyhounds had 101 starts for 40 wins, 25 seconds, 8 thirds, giving an outstanding UDR of 0.5600. The 2023 Strike Rate Trainer Award of the Year goes to two-year-old trainer Karen Walsh. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. It is an honour to win this award. I'd like to thank Gary and Linda Harding. It is their continued enthusiasm and support that keeps me going. The team on the farm, Sophie Whitaker and Jamie Prudent, without them, it wouldn't be possible, and I would be a mess. They they were also runners-up to this award, an enormous achievement in their first year of training. I'm very proud of them, and I'm sure it's the beginning of great things for them. I would like to congratulate all nominees and award winners tonight. You are all such a credit to our industry. Thank you all again, and have a great night. Congratulations, Karen. Thank you, Sean. We've already touched on the outstanding quality of our New Zealand-bred greyhounds. This next award celebrates that New Zealand Dam of the Year, which will be presented uh, by uh, uh, Greyhound Racing New Zealand board member uh, Fred Guimont. The finalists for this award are All About Space, Progeny won $225,000 in prize money, 150 starts, 45 wins, 12 at open class level, including Space Boys great, uh, Group 1 Auckland Cup victory. Dave's Dot, 56 races. Her progeny, 422 starts only for that, 56, 240,000 in prize money, Gold Star Kalido being the standout. Kissing Gwyneth, her progeny had 377 starts during the season, 67 wins, 14 at open class, amassing 227,000 in prize money, big time Prada, the standout. No jinx, she whopped the winners of 45 races from 348 starts, 239,000 in prize money with no keeper the star. Opawa Tab, her progeny had 119 starts, 31 wins for the season, including nine at open class, 10 distance wins, and amassed $210,000 in prize money. Opawa Superstar, the standout performer, she's a ripper. Progeny had 77 wins from 271 starts, for season earnings of $187,000, and with the main contributor, Group 1 New Zealand Breeder Stakes winner, Mrs Chin. The winner of the New Zealand Dam of the Year is All About Space, owned by the Conspiracy Theory Syndicate. How All About Space. Fly me to the moon, let me play. Owned by the Conspiracy Theory Syndicate, All About Space's progeny collectively had 150 starts in the 2022-23 season for 45 wins and 48 placings, amassing $225,000 in prize money. 12 wins were at open class level. Spacetron looms up the outside, sweeping to lead Spacetron and rips clear. Space Boy was the star of the SH Avatar All About Space Litter with his 2023 Group 1 Auckland Cup victory. Trying hard as Space Boy and there followed Carlos Jewell, Aston Kennett, Space Boy up on the outside, the Conspiracy Theory team, they get the Auckland Cup. Evening people, <clears throat> this was an unbelievable conspiracy syndicate started by the White Horse Boys, the Longburn Table. Um, we got all about space. She was a little girl. Um, her name was Adeptly, maimed. She got roll bowled with the big boys and her, her progeny has turned out to be unbelievable. Her, la her second litter went to the trolls the other day 375 metres, they all went under 22 seconds. The beast was um, 21.4, 
which is unbelievable. So we're in for a huge ride. She's a beautiful little bitch, and all the boys have had a lot of fun. And excuse my language, and and she's just had another litter, so another eight. So everybody has had a brilliant time with this little bitch. And if you ever go past Longburn, go to the Wadi's Tamlin and see the memorabilia on the on the walls. Cheers, guys. Thank you, the Conspiracy Theory Syndicate there. New Zealand Sire of the Year. And I'd like to invite Greyhound Racing New Zealand board member Trevor Taylor to the stage to present this award. Now, the finalists are American Warrior. He left the winners of 70 races from 407 starts, including 19 open class victories, combined 248,000. And Opawa Ryder won the Group 1 Galaxy Sprint. Big Time Paddy, his dogs had 140 wins from 895 starts earning $392,000. 12 wins were at open class, including Allegro Warriors Group 1 New Zealand Futurity. Thrilling Boris, he was responsible for 115 winners from 805 starts, including 14 open class wins, amassing 306,000. Mintaz was Thrilling Boris's leading winner, with him prevailing in 12 races. Winsome Opawa, his runners had 114 wins from 836 starts, nine wins at open class level, and his progeny combined won $387,000. Apawa Linda was the standout, 12 races won. The winner of the New Zealand Sire of the Year, Big Time Paddy, owned by Lisa Coe and Craig Randall. <laughs> Owned by Lisa Cole and Craig Rendell, Big Time Paddy is the 2022-23 New Zealand Sire of the Year. His progeny had 895 starts during the season for 140 wins, including 12 at open class level and 258 placings, amassing $392,000 in prize money. Allegro Warrior won the 2023 Group 1 New Zealand Futurity. Here's Space Boy to the outside, then thrilling Reggie. Allegro Warrior in front, Space Boy late. I think Allegro Warrior just held in the futurity from Space Boy. The Warrior holds. While Big Time Roman was successful in the 2023 Auckland Derby. Big Time Roman zipping river, Big Time Roman. He will kick, kick, kick and get the derby. Um, Big Time Paddy, he was just... He was a machine and um, no words can describe how good this dog was. He won the amazing chase against all these Aussie dogs and just blew them out of the water. So just like to say a big thank you to everyone and that was helping us out and yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ella. Big time, Patty. Thank you, Trevor. Right, we go on to Something a bit different, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time. We've got the TAB Run of the Year. TAB sponsoring this one, and they're putting up a $1,000 bonus bet to the winner of the award. But I'd like to invite Cameron Roger back to the stage to present this award. Winner of the TAB Run of the Year, Postman Pat. Postman Paddy raced away the turn. He's a track record holder. Now he's a Group 2 winner. The fastest postie in town blows them away. You've got no idea how fast this dog is. He's gone past them like they were tied to the fence and he's had the audacity to win the race by three or four lengths. He's got what every top class dog needs and that is speed to burn. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat. Um, thanks very much. I just want to thank our um, training team uh, down in Dunsandle. They're not here tonight. Uh, this dog certainly given us a heap of thrills in Australia and New Zealand, and uh, we hope we might get a few more later this year. Um, thanks very much. We've still got some very special awards to come tonight, and we're kicking off with the Greyhound Racing New Zealand Board Award, sponsored by the Entain Australia in New Zealand. Every month, the Greyhound Racing New Zealand Board selects a young achiever in the sport under the age of 30, imagine being that again, to win a monthly board award, and each of these monthly winners receive $500. All 12 of the monthly winners from the 22-23 season were then considered by the overall Greyhound Racing New Zealand Board Award, with the winner tonight taking home $5,000.
dollars as selected by the GRNZ board. Congratulations to all 12 finalists, all incredibly deserving, and they all show the future is bright in the industry. The 12 finalists are Katie Wiley. Give them a round of applause as we go. Dan Roberts. Sam Lozell. Jamie Pruden. Ashley Bradshaw. Claire Harding. Leah Washington. Dylan Boyce. Sydney Cleave. Jack Johnson. Sean Codlin. Natasia Hopton. To announce, to announce the winner, to come up and say a few words, I'd like to welcome Lachlan Fitz, CFO and Deputy CEO of Entain Australia and New Zealand. Lachlan, please. As, as we've recognised, um, you know, it is, it is really important part of the industry to ensure that we're retaining the young achievers. And so, um, you know, that, that part of the, the market and, and that part of the ecosystem really critical, important to the future. Um, therefore, it's my great pleasure to be able to present this award tonight. And, and as we've just heard from a, a field of our uh, 12 outstanding finalists, uh, the GRNZ board has selected the winner of this year's award is Sean Codlin. <laughs> Kofita trainer Sean Codlin had a stellar season with his 25 dogs having 397 starts for 67 wins and 115 placings. Season highlights included Sweet Potential and Thrilling Eva running 1-2 in the 2023 Auckland Oaks on Silver Collar Day. But up they come and Sweet Potential, she's an Oaks winner, Sweet Potential by a big margin. Sean Codlin gets the Quinella with Thrilling Eva. They come for home, Sweet Parker. You leave him alone at your own peril, and he's come out and he's won, and he's won well today. Sean is also a valued committee member on the Waikato board, and his positive contributions on and off the track are appreciated by all. Wow. Well, um Firstly, just thank you very much to everyone that was involved in um, selecting all 12 people um, up in the running. I think we're all deserving of being in the spotlight. Um, youth is a big part um, and definitely the backbone going forward and I'm just very grateful to um, be selected in the 12, let alone take the, um, you know, chocolates, shall we say, um, and just Again, thank you to everyone behind the scenes and, and you know, everyone that helps me. Um, we're all a family. It's an industry of everyone getting together, everyone helping each other, um, making sure we're clean and, and professional and I think we're moving into a positive place. Um, up the WAS, up the youth and uh, <laughs> thank you. We now move on to the uh, Greyhound Racing New Zealand Special Achievement Awards. The first of these awards will be presented by board member Wayne Steele. We've spoken on a number of occasions tonight about the strength of our breeding here in New Zealand, and this greyhound serves as a fabulous example. So, last season, Kissing Gwyneth's progeny brought up $1 million in prize money, an enormous achievement. Uh, one of her flagships, of course, being Big Time Prada, 35 wins from 82 races, 114000 in prize money. But all of her progeny have been contributors and across a range of distances and for her offspring to hit the million dollar mark last season is certainly worth celebrating. The first of our Great Aunt Racing New Zealand Special Achievement Award winners tonight is Kissing Gwyneth, owned by the BBC Syndicate. Kissing Gwyneth's progeny have now collectively brought up over $1 million in prize money, an enormous achievement. Some of her standout achievers at the track have included Big Time Prada and Big Time Epic. It was all over at the get-go, Prada picked the start of Bolton. Epic the one to catch by five, Epic is travelling sweetly and will Bolton. 
owned by the BBC syndicate. Kissing Gwyneth is a worthy recipient of a GRNZ Special Achievement Award. Yeah, thank you everybody. Kissing Gwyneth has turned into a brew bitch that, that you can only dream about. One million in stake earnings. Just simply amazing. The 29 greyhounds that she whelped, who raced, all won at least one race. 21 of those greyhounds reach either C5 or C2D. It's quite a remarkable achievement. Her progeny won from 295 metres to 660, was placed over 779. But um, the biggest thanks that the BBC syndicate uh, can offer is to the Cole family, who have out their guidance, you know, after kissing Gwyneth uh, progeny, uh, certainly could not have achieved these heights. Brandon, Lisa, Ella, Monty and Max, along uh, with Georgia, who was involved in the earlier days, the Cole family, did all the work with every single one of these greyhounds. And that's totally uh, made the success you know, you know, of the Kissing Gwyneth uh, progeny. It's been one hell of a ride for the BBC syndicate who were formed uh, to race uh, ki uh, Kissing Gwyneth's mother, Yorkley Beauty. When she retired, we bred from her and uh, Kissing Gwyneth was a daughter. She was uh, successful on the track herself. And when she retired, uh, three of the syndicate members uh, stayed in you know, for the entire journey we've been on since. And that's Brendan, um, uh, Craig Randall and myself. So all I can say is thank you very much to everybody involved in making this remarkable achievement you know, of a million dollars you know, from one brood bitch. Um, yeah, amazing. Thank you. The second of our special achievement awards this evening be presented by our GRNZ CEO, Edward Rennell. One of the standout performances last season was Gold Star Kalito's sensational come from behind win in the Duke of Edinburgh's Silver Collar, one of New Zealand's most uh, prestigious races. And what made the win even more special was the fact that it brought up young trainer Riley Evans' first ever a Group 1 winner. At just uh, 21 years of age, Gold Star Kalito's win gave Riley the title of the youngest ever trainer to win a silver collar, and for that reason, Riley's being recognised tonight with the Greyhound Racing New Zealand Special Achievement Award. Gold star Carlitos come from behind victory in the Group of Edinburgh Silver Collar gave 21-year-old trainer Riley Evans his first Group One victory. Gold Star Carlito on the outside. Gold Star Carlito for Gold Star Racing. They get the colour of 2023. It also gave Riley the title of youngest ever trainer to win the Duke of Edinburgh Silver Collar, making him a worthy recipient of a GRNZ Special Achievement Award. Oh, well, this is another one I didn't really expect to get, but um, now this is pretty bloody cool. Um, i just got to say, there's two people in the room that I really have to thank a lot. There's a lot of people in this room specifically that have helped me a lot, give me a lot of good advice over, over my years in training, even though it's only been two or three, but it's my mum and my dad. There's not many people that would stand aside and, and leave a, a, um, a kennel like they have for me. They've done an absolutely huge job and I all my success to the two of them. Um, one other, the other, other person I have to thank is Maddie. She's um, she puts a lot, a lot of, uh, puts up with a lot of my bullshit and complaining and that. But um, yeah, I also got to thank Carlito as well. Um, we sort of come off the boxes and I thought, oh, you haven't jumped, mate. What are you doing? It didn't really go to plan. And um, you sort of keep it got in front of us. And I thought, oh, nah, here we go. Gary's got me again. Um, but 
yeah, to come through and win, win the collar like that. It's the one race I've always wanted to win. Um, there's obviously a lot of good races that have that had a lot of um, a lot of history behind, but to me that race takes the cake and yeah, to finally win it after Dad trying for a long time and yeah, it's sort of my first crack, so I sort of hold that above him. But um, <laughs> but yeah, thanks to Carlito and yeah, thanks to my parents as well. So cheers. <laughs> Congratulations, Riley. Thank you, Thank you, Edward. Getting down towards the nitty gritty. Our third and final Greyhound Racing New Zealand Special Achievement Award tonight will be presented by board member Corey Steele. I think everyone in the room will have heard of Postman Pat and Big Daddy, both Greyhounds owned and bred by Jose Arthur. Both commenced their careers here in New Zealand. Both have gone on and done spectacular things across in Australia and continue to do so. Roll on the million dollar chase next month. The final recipients of the Special Achievement Award tonight are Postman Pat and Big Daddy. Fly the New Zealand red flag very high in Australia. Postman Pat, a son of Hooked on Scotch and Birdie T, won his first seven races across the ditch before finishing second in the $1 million Brisbane Cup. It's all Postman Pat, six in front of the turn, over Simply Limelight, but it's the Trans-Tasman superstar, Postman Pat, by three lengths. While Big Daddy, a son of Fernando Bale and Rosa T, won the Southern Stars final at Goulburn. But Big Daddy lights up Lilac City, and Big Daddy wins the Southern Stars. Owned and bred by Jose Arthur, these greyhounds are worthy recipients of a GRNZ Special Achievement Award. Not much more to add, really. There's, um, you know, our, we really owe the thanks to our training team in Dunsandal, and um, the guys in Australia are obviously doing a great job as well. Um, and uh, hopefully, we'll see them race a few more times later this year. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Jose and Donald, and Corey as well. Right, before. We get on to the Greyhound of the Year, we have an inductee. Hall of Fame time. It's incredibly special to induct humans and greyhounds into the Hall of Fame. Tonight we're about to induct one of the greats. And to present this, and uh, maybe just, you know, not having to rush up onto stage, <laughs> Greyhound Racing New Zealand Deputy Chair, Gene Fahey, is to do the honours. We've got a bit to read through here uh, to pay homage, pay respect uh, to the recipient, the person who's going to be the inductee. For over two decades, the influence of the Opawa Racing Team has been profound, not only in the Canterbury region, but New Zealand. Opawa Racing Limited, formed by three mates, Robin Wales and the late pair of Graham Campbell and Ron Tobb. The Opawa name came from the Challenge service station operated by Robin, located in the Christchurch suburb of Opawa. Initially, they were into the harness racing. It was in the early 2000s when Robin introduced the Greyhound Racing. Opawa Racing Limited then commenced racing grey greyhounds, initially trained for them by Nick Thackwell. Not long after, Robin was introduced to Dave and Jean Fahey, and it was through Dave's contacts with Australian Greyhound Racing, where Opawa Racing saw an opportunity to import Australian bred racing stock. Black tight success quickly followed. Finishing second in the 2004 New Zealand Oaks, the Fahey trained imported bitch Jupiter Jazz, won the Group 2 New Zealand St Ledger at Addington in January 2005. That win was the start of a constant flow of numerous Fahey prepared group race winners for Opawa Racing Limited that continues. This combination developed into one of the most successful, successful racing relationships ever seen, with an amazing total of 42 group race winners. The early success came from a succession of quality Australian bred greyhounds, with the majority of them carrying the winsome naming prefix. It was around 2009 when Robin, along with his mates, decided that they had numerous top-class brood, uh, brood bitches to breed from, and they embarked on a breeding program that was to yield incredible success, success which continues today. 
The switch to breeding their own racing stock saw the partners adopt the Opawa naming prefix for their greyhounds. And of those 42 group race winners, 20 of them, 29 of them were bred by Opawa Racing. They have also bred a group one winner plus two group two winners who are owned by other industry participants. Included in those victories have been big wins in the big three races on the national calendar, five New Zealand Cups, two Auckland Cups, plus the prestigious Duke of Edinburgh Silver Collar. The breeding program also saw the start of the Robin Wales led training operation based in Sefton. The Fahees were allocated the Greyhounds who displayed top class potential with the remaining puppies being mentored with considerable success by Wales. Another string to their bow came with Winsome Opawa, who after winning a number of group races himself, then went on to become a hugely successful sire when stood at stud by Opawa Racing. His influence still evident today is seen by Winston Opawa being a finalist for the New Zealand Sire Award this evening. They established a breeding policy that has been reaping rewards in that a potential brood bitch must have broken the 30, 30.20 30-20 barrier over 520 metres at Addington Raceway. That policy has proved to be right on the mark. And they have had some brood bitches that have turned into prolific producers, including Perfect Token, Token K. Shining example of this is Opawa Tab, who is the dam of the greyhound, who Robin Wales rates as the best greyhound. Opawa Racing has bred Opawa Superstar. Star by name and performance, five Group 1 titles. Uh, that this Alan Davidson and Opawa Racing owned Greyhound has annexed. Tragedy impacted on Opawa Racing with the passing of firstly Ron Todd and then Graham Campbell. Robin also suffered from the sad passing of his wife Linda. Robin has continued on with a successful Opawa Racing operation while always remembering and acknowledging his mates who have passed and acknowledging them at every opportunity. Robin Wales has spread out Opawa Greyhounds into other racing regions, a move that not only supports other trainers, but helps to boost racing numbers across the regions. Known for a dry sense of humour, at times you wouldn't know if he's joking or being serious. Renowned for his generosity, or as others in the industry have described, Robin has a heart of gold. Robin often hints at retiring, but as most know, Robin Wales will be around impacting on the greyhound racing industry for a long time. Congratulations to Robin Wales and Opawa Racing Limited. Tonight you're inducted into the Greyhound Racing New Zealand Hall of Fame. <laughs> Robin Wales out there from Opawa Racing with the dog that has now won them a New Zealand Cup, an Auckland Cup, a New Zealand Breeder Stakes and a Waterloo Cup. Robin, how do you describe this dog? He's uh, fantastic. He does it all. The times when you think he'll let you down, he doesn't let you down. He's, he's brilliant. You've had so many fantastic dogs over the years, training them and owning them. Is he right up there? Oh, yes, definitely up there. Definitely up there. And probably probably the best. With Dave and Jean, they haven't won this race, and now they've won it. And um, no, I can't. They're amazing people. They're amazing. Thank you. I really don't deserve this. You know, there's, there's good, a lot of good people in the Greyhound racing that have done far better than I have that haven't got it. All I can say is thank you very much and at the same time acknowledge everyone that's helped me. You know, it's a great mob out here. You know, people are great. No bickering, no arguing. It's, it's great. <laughs> It is. <laughs> it is. And I must thank the Faze, my staff, everyone. Everyone that's been involved with me. I've got to thank them. Thank you. Really do. Well, Greyhound of the Year, but uh, we do have something else to do before uh, Greyhound of the Year. Uh, they tell me this one's been a pretty well kept uh, secret, actually. Uh, we are going to have another Hall of Fame inductee tonight, and I'd just like to welcome into the room, if I could, please, uh, Carolyn, Marco, Zuri, Peter, and Alison. <laughs> See, Rosso, you didn't need to be upset about me being the MC tonight. You, you know, we're pre-planned. We had other things organised for you tonight. 
Ah, where do you, thank you, Sean, uh, where do you begin to summarise Mark Rosanowski? Multi-decade professional, dedicated service to New Zealand greyhound racing. As I've always observe, obs, uh, observed him as a member of the media, it's an all-round good bugger. Rosso started calling phantom commentaries as a schoolboy, school used marbles, used marbles to hone his initial skills. Of course, we hear him at Manawatu Tuesday, Hattrick Friday, and of course, along with other remote calling and trackside TV presenting duties. Well, he's also contributed so much to the industry, including the likes of On the Bunny and Dog Zone, and of course, uh, just been a massive influence over numerous decades. His involvement in greyhound racing began when, age 14, he saw on the man, a man on the road walking a pair of greyhounds while he was biking home from school. He stopped and talked to Pat Cagney, who turned into a, a, a lifelong Rosanowski family friend. So lovely to have Rosso's parents and, and, and family here. Became, of course, a focal point of Rosso's life when, the, uh, when, he, when he met Pat and uh, had a Greyhound radio show on Christchurch Plains FM, worked in the Christchurch Press in his late teens, became a member of Christchurch Greyhound Racing Club 87, went to broadcasting school and then... Uh, honing his commentary skills, skills by calling Canterbury Greyhound sweepstake race meetings uh, along with the occasional thoroughbred and harness trials. The period of being the Southland Greyhound Racing Club commentator was followed by Rosso being one of the original people involved in Action TV, now Trackside TV, plus later on Radio Trackside. Rosso caused quite a stir in the late 1990s. And this is what the script says. For reasons only be known to himself, he got a perm. <laughs> Graham Thorne was furious. How dare this young man copy me, Thorne, he said. Rosso's father, Peter, said there is not one curl in the Rosanowski family here. <laughs> not until then, anyway. I believe the handiwork came from a hairdresser in the north end of Belfast. It is Rosso's rapport with the entire racing industry and the total respect held for him by his peers across all three racing codes that really makes him stand out. He's been instrumental in assisting with the fledging broadcasting careers of a number of youngsters. Over the years, Rosso has maintained his huge enthusiasm for the Greyhound Code and is a staunch advocate for your, our, and the sport. His presentation for his greyhound roles was and still remains always 110% professional. Renowned for his attention to detail and the research he undertakes for his in-depth race previews and reviews is always immaculate. That includes his period of writing articles for publications like The Flash, plus also previously being the editor of the monthly New Zealand Greyhound magazine. New Zealand Greyhound Racing attracted worldwide international media attention when in January 2014, Rosso commentated a Manawatu race while a magnitude 6.2 earthquake was occurring. The earth really moves down in that part of the country, believe me. Rosso never broke stride despite the severe shaking that he was experiencing, including a TV monitor that crashed down on him. His live commentary at the time included the following grabs. Everything here is shaking, I'm afraid. It looks like we might have a bit of an earthquake going on here. A very big earthquake. In fact, I'm a very large earthquake going on here. The race is underway here. Unfortunately, the monitor has fallen on me. <laughs> As the com camera operator refocused the camera back on the track, panning around to the field, which at this stage was on the big sweeping turn, Rosso carried on with his race call, calling them up the street and calling a, a rather tight race finish and then say to the studio host, Steve Davis, I'm out of here. <laughs> Media organisations worldwide replayed the trackside commentary clip with Rosso being extensively interviewed. Included was an interview on a US programme where the host, Jimmy Fallon, in good fun, tried to mimic Rosso's commentary. He has the admiration of everybody at trackside, a testament to 25 years plus for the channel, a professional commitment which does nothing but command total respect. But it's not only Rosso's service to Trackside that does this, it's the way he carries himself every day 
whether as a broadcaster on air or in the office, working with producers to create feature race content. And there's one or two of us that are experts on this. The television industry is a hotbed of egos. No names, but Rosso simply does not have one. And his emphasis on collaboration as a presenter means he is a delight to work with. From the current generation of trackside producers and presenters, Mark Rosanowski is a consummate professional and a greyhound racing resource and advocate without equal. As a mentor, he stands to ensure that the next generation of tracksiders will maintain his standards of professional excellence. Greyhound racing in New Zealand is indebted to Mark Rosanowski's valued contribution to the Greyhound Code over many decades. Therefore, Rosso's induction into the Greyhound Racing New Zealand Hall of Fame is a thoroughly deserved accolade. Mark Rosanowski. Of racing for all three codes here in Christchurch. The highlights are the New Zealand Cups for trotting and galloping and the New Zealand Greyhound Championship, as you can probably hear. A bit of Rosso. And a bit of a go here, Andy, but a Cheney in front as they come down the side. Blind and ready, race 11. Everything's shaking here, I'm afraid. Looks like we might have uh, a bit of an earthquake going on here, a very big earthquake, in fact. Um, we've got a very large earthquake going here. The race is under, underway here. Uh, unfortunately, the monitor's fallen uh, on me, but I've managed to pick it up. I can tell you El Jet is in front here. I'm not going to be able to do much of a call of this race. Uh, coming out after it there would have been uh, Boston Chanel who's going to be tough to beat as they come around the corner. Squeezing through on the inside is Crush Monkey. We're still shaking here. Crush Monkey driving through on the inside. It's going to score from, I think, Al Jetta and just in between runners there to Boston Chanel. Sorry, I just I don't know what to say, and I know there's a there's a big league game coming shortly, and I nearly shed a few tears there when the family walked into the room. I haven't cried since 2011 when the Warriors lost to Manly in the grand final. <laughs> and prior to then, I hadn't cried since 2002 when we lost to the Roosters in the grand final. And if there's any tears tonight, I hope it's to do with the Hall of Fame and not uh, what might happen in a couple of hours' time. But um, truly, I, a little bit like. Um, like Robin, I, like Robin, you deserve to be in the Hall of Fame, mate. You, you, you're keeping the place, you're keeping the place going. I'm just kind of doing my job, um, and it's a great job, and it's been a terrific job. Look, I don't want to hold things up. There are people I have to thank, obviously. Um, my father down here, uh, Peter, who's been um, a big part. Of, well, obviously, he's been an enormous part of my life, but um, my racing life as well, um, with everything that, that Dad has done through his stints on the on the board, the TAB board and Christchurch Greyhound board and the New Zealand Greyhound Racing board as it was back then um, and just inspiring me uh, all along the way and taking me to the races when I was four years old at Arari and I found a, a dollar note as they were back then and uh, he allowed me to put it on a, a horse called Bunny Hug that ran 15th and um, <laughs> and I was hooked. <laughs> um, that's not the worst commentary I've ever done either, which is embarrassing. But... <laughs> and you might have noticed one of, the, one of the dogs was called Crushed Monkey. It was uh, Nathan Udy's dog, and I called it to win, and it actually didn't. Um, I, I actually went and uh, checked out the photo finish, and I actually called the wrong dog first, so that was disappointing. Um, Pat Cagney got me involved. Ray Adcock was huge uh, in my development. Ray said, you know, one day they might name a race after you, just make sure it's not a memorial. Um, <laughs> And I almost feel like the Hall of Fame is like, I'm not that old, am I? I mean, <laughs> grief. Um, my thanks, obviously, to, uh, to my wife, Caroline, and my two boys, and the fact that I you know, dash away and spend time away, and um, they make sure that uh, everything's good back home uh, for me to return to. But I owe a debt to all of you people here tonight because you've made my job enjoyable, fun. I love the industry because I love the people in it, um, people past, present. 
uh, and hopefully future. Thank you to everybody in Trackside. Uh, Mary and Twentyman's my current boss here. I've worked with Mary for a long, long time. Thank you for everything you've done. Um, but everybody here who works at Trackside is just a big part of my life. But the, the best thing for me, all the struggles that we might have had as a code, is that we're still here, we're still celebrating dogs and people like we've seen tonight who I think are a credit to this country. Um, and I just feel like <laughs> we, um, we just got to hang in there and we just got to band together. If we stay together, we day stay together, we'll be fine. And um, one, one final thing I'd like to say is that um, what gives me joy is that if it all finishes tomorrow, I've got people here like Andy McCook, Philippa Morris, so many young people that are coming up through the ranks that can, well, they kind of have taken over anyway. Um, but it's just like a... Yeah, exactly, Rob. But they make... They've re-energised re me probably in the last few years um, and helped me to sort of get going again. And thanks to everybody in Trackside, the young people, um, who kind of keep me energised. And tonight, those 12 names that were read out, and we know that we can add to those, just awesome. Sean, congratulations, mate. Brilliant. Um, I'm, I'm genuinely overwhelmed, so thank you very much once again. Congratulations, Mark Rosso. Right. We've come to the ultimate award of the evening. Greyhound of the Year. Tonight we've seen awards presented to the best of the best and we have a number of strong contenders for this exclusive award tonight, the standout achiever for the 2022-2023 racing season. To announce and present the award and to say a few words, first I'd like to invite Desley Simpson, the Deputy Mayor of Auckland to the stage, please. Desley, thank you. Uh, thank you, Hamish. No doubt you haven't lost that at all. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Hamish Mackay. You've done a great job tonight. So I'm really thrilled to be here tonight uh, at the Greyhound Racing New Zealand Annual Awards. Auckland, of course, is the perfect venue to hold the awards, as we have racing in Auckland every Sunday. But I bet you're glad it's not tomorrow, eh? Because you're going to celebrate really well tonight and have tomorrow off to get over it. So well done. Um, as we know, this evening is all about celebrating the stars of the track, those sleek and speedy greyhounds that give their all in every race. So greyhound racing is not just a sport. It's a passion. It's about those heart-pounding moments when you're on the edge of your seat, cheering your favourite dog, hoping they'll cross the finish line first. In New Zealand, we've got some of the finest greyhounds and trainers around. Our dogs don't just run, they fly. But it's not just about winning races. It's about the bond between these amazing dogs and their dedicated handlers. It's about the early mornings and the late nights, the hard work and the love that goes into making a champion. I'd like to acknowledge Liz Whelan, uh, Chief Operating Op Officer from Greyhound Racing New Zealand, who's invited me here tonight. My very dear friend, Glenda Hughes, uh, and all the guests that have traveled from around the country and Australia to be here today. And all the people that have made such a valuable contribution to the sport as well. This evening, some of these people have been inducted into the Hall of Fame as recognition for their achievements and their contributions. And tonight, we're handing out awards, and rightly so. We're recognising the fastest, the smartest, the most tenacious of our four-legged athletes. And you know what? They all deserve it. But let's not forget our unsung heroes the kennel hands, the volunteers, and everyone who makes sure that these races happen. You're the glue that, hand, that holds this community together, and we certainly appreciate you. Thank you. So 
here's to the dogs that make our hearts race and the people who make it happen. Let's celebrate another fantastic year of greyhound racing in New Zealand and may the coming year be even more exciting. But now, it's the time to announce the winner of the Greyhound of the Year. Job roll. <laughs> and the winner of the Greyhound of the Year is Opawa Superstar. Opawa Superstar had 20 starts for 11 wins and 6 minor placings during the season, with victories coming in the Group 1 New Zealand Cup, the Waterloo Cup and the Rose and Thistle South Island Champs. He's a superstar by name, he's a superstar by nature. The tall Opawa Superstar. He might be little in stature, but he's got the heart of a lion. Bred by Opawa Racing Limited, trained by Gene and Dave Fahey, and owned by Alan Davidson and Opawa Racing Limited, Opawa Superstar is the 2022-23 Greyhound of the Year. Bruno is a brilliant dog, and thanks to Robin and Alan for handing him on to us. We're so pleased with him. He's very spoilt in our kennels. Um, he's a favourite of some of the staff. Maybe not me. Bruno doesn't like me. I don't know why. <laughs> but um, thank you very much. It, it, yeah. He's done so well. We've had a variety of injuries. We would have liked to have raced him a lot more often than we did. But he's just one of those dogs. He's only a little dog. And he, um, so David's had to do a lot of, David and Katie have had to do a lot of work to keep him sound. So it's, it's great that Robin's been able to win the Greyhound of the Year for with his dogs. What? <laughs> so thank you, thank you for allowing us to have this and for Robin to win this award. And Alan. Congratulations to our Power Superstar team. Thank you, Desley. You mentioned the glue of the industry. You're actually the glue of the city. We appreciate that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, concludes the formalities of this evening. Congratulations to all our winners tonight. And I just wanted to practice something here about, um, I was trying to come up with a line for Opawa Superstar and the immortal words of Tina Turner, you are simply the best, better than all the rest. Thank you, good night. And up the wires, ladies and gentlemen, good night. <laughs> <laughs>